In this video, we will use the graph protocol to index our smart contract. Uh, so we can have a full-fledged backend with a GraphQL interface that we can query from our front end. So go to thegraph.com, um, go to products and subgraph studio. You will need to connect with your MetaMask wallet. So click MetaMask. And I already have a subgraph deployed here, but I'm going to create a new one from scratch. So our contract is deployed to RinkB. So choose RinkB here and give whatever name you want to your subgraph. So we're going to follow the steps here to install the graph CLI, initialize the subgraph and deploy it. Let's start with installing the graph CLI, copy this command and run it in your terminal. Next, copy the next command and let's follow the steps. The protocol is going to be Ethereum, so click enter. Subgraph slug is this one, so let's just click enter again. The directory to create the subgraph in, let's just leave everything to default. The Ethereum network is RinkB, so choose RinkB here. Contract address, passed in the address of the contract you deployed in previous videos. It should be in your .env file. It will tell you that it failed to fetch the EBI from Etherscan, so we need to provide a local EBI file. So, so go to your project uh, folder, go to artifacts, contracts, nftmarket.json, and here's the EBI. This is uh, an array. Just select everything. copy and let's create a JSON file in the same uh, directory where we uh, ran graph init. So it's for my case it's the home directory so let's do code ebi.json and let's pass in the ebi now let's go back to the original terminal and the ABI file will be um, ABI.json. The contract name, let's call it NFC Market. After it finishes, open the newly created uh, directory in VS Code. Open the subgraph.yaml. This is the config file for our subgraph. Uh, it has a bunch of information generated from the inputs we gave in the terminal. We're gonna make a few modifications. For instance, we're only going to have one entity, which is uh, the NFT transfer, our custom event entity. So let's delete everything else. And the same for event handlers. We are only going to need the NFT transfer. So let's delete again everything else. We should probably also add the start block. So if we go to the docs here, developer create a subgraph and search for start block. Uh, so there's a start block uh, entry here and it says that it's the optional number of the block that the data source starts indexing from. And in most cases, we suggest using the block in which the contract was created. So let's go ahead and grab this contract's start block. So copy the address, go to RinkBay, 
www.etherscan.io and passed in, in the address. So this transaction is the contract creation and it was created at this block number. So copy it and add it under the source here. So start block. And if for some reason you couldn't get the start block of your contract, then just leave this empty. Just delete this entry here. Uh, it should still work. Now, if we go to generated NFT market, NFT market.ts, um, by the way, this is not a TypeScript file, If even if it's a .ts here. This is assembly script. Um, it's similar to TypeScript in its syntax, and currently VS Code thinks that this is TypeScript, so uh, I'm not really sure how to make VS Code uh, recognize this is an assembly script file, but um, yeah, we just have to deal with it. And uh, this file contains a bunch of classes, approval, uh, approval for all, NFT transfer, uh, these are all classes that map to events from our ABI. Um, so as you can see, we have an approval event here. We have uh, approval for all, a bunch of events. And it's not necessary, but let's just go ahead and delete ev all the events that we don't need. Let's delete approval, approval for all. Let's keep NFT transfer. Um, let's delete these two and that's all the events we had save the new ABI and run graph cogen oops I misspelled it graph code gen and if we go to the nft market dot ts uh, you'll see that all the uh, classes we don't need are removed now. So we only have NFT transfer and the NFT market uh, contract class. Now let's go to schema.graphql and uh, this will be used to generate uh, the schema uh, classes here, the schema.ts file. So let's change the schema. Let's call it NFT. Um, the ID will be the token ID, so, and basically we want this query fields to correspond to the arguments we have in our NFT transfer event. So if you remember, we have a token ID from to token URI and price. So we need the same uh, fields in the schema. So um, the ID is, the token ID, we need a from address, and in GraphQL, this will be of type bytes, just like the owner, and it's non nullable, so we must add an exclamation mark. Uh, we need the to address, we need the token URI, token URI of type string non-nullable. We need uh, the price, which will be a big int, just like the count here. So let's just change this to price and delete these other two. Now let's run a uh, graph code gen again. And go to schema.ts and we will have our NFT class generated for us. Now go to source mapping.ts and as you can see we have a bunch of functions here handle approval, handle approval for all, handle NFT transfer and if you remember in our subgraph.yaml we had a bunch of event handlers here we deleted them and we only kept this one so we will only need the handle NFT transfer handler uh, that handles NFT transfer events so go back to mapping.ts, uh, delete all these uh, functions and rename this to handle NFT transfer uh, to match the handler name here. 
Now the event is not going to be an approval. It's going to be an NFT transfer. And we can delete stuff that we don't need here. So uh, this handle trans NFT transfer uh, function will be executed every time uh, there is an NFT transfer event uh, emitted from our smart contract. Now, every time an NFT transfer event is emitted, we need to write to the to the store or the database of the graph protocol. Now, uh, let's start writing the body of this handle NFT transfer function. I'm going to get inspired from this example code. First, we will create a new NFT entity. So const NFT equals new NFT. Um, I should manually import it from generated schema and the constructor takes an id of type string so the id um, we can grab the id from the event dot params dot token id and this is a big int we should call to string on it now we need to set the rest of the fields uh, of this NFT. So let's start with the two uh, address. So NFT dot two equals event dot params dot two. Same thing for from. So NFT dot from equals event dot params dot from. Same thing for the price. And the only field left is the token URI. Now, if you remember, the only time where we have the token URI in the NFT transfer event is in the create NFT function. All the other events here, uh, we just have empty strings. Thinking about it now, we don't even need the token URI in the NFT transfer event. We can just remove it. Um, it's it's really useless. We're not going to use it. Um, I thought that we are going to need it, so that's why I put it here. Turns out we don't. That's my bad, but uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, we can actually grab the token URI from the contract. So if you can read here, it says it's also possible to access smart contracts from, from mappings. Uh, so we can do something like this and we can call contract.tokenURI. So we don't really need the token URI from the event params. So let's do const NFT market equals NFT market dot bind event dot address. And we can do const token URI equals NFT market dot token URI. Passing in the token ID, which is event dot params dot token ID. Then set the NFT dot token URI to the token URI we just grabbed. And then finally we can call NFT dot save. And this will save this entity to the store. So we can remove all the example code here. We don't need it anymore. And um, that's it. Now it's time to deploy the subgraph. Uh, go back to your subgraph page. Um, first of all, we need to authenticate in the CLI. Copy this command and in the terminal run it we're already in the directory um, copy the next command and finally the last command uh, the version label let's do version uh, 0 0.0.1 for example Uh, the subgraph is deployed. Let's go back here. The status is deployed with the version and it's still syncing. We can check the logs here. 
if you're interested. Um, we also have a playground and uh, uh, we can use this. We will use this to build uh, our GraphQL queries. For instance, this query fetches the first five NFTs. Uh, let's run it. And here we have our NFTs array. We only have one because if you remember, we only created one uh, from the front end. Uh, if we go and create another one, it will appear here. Uh, let's go ahead and do that actually. So go back to the front end, uh, try to create a new NFT. Um, go back to the playground, rerun the query. Uh, it's going to take some time to sync, so just wait. And uh, if you retry, uh, you'll see that we have our second NFT here that we just created. So our subgraph works. We can also add the price here. Um, so those um, NFTs are not listed for sale, so the price is zero. So yeah. Um, our subgraph is working, it's deployed. Now we are ready to start using it in our front end uh, in the next video.